So everybody always comes into the store asking, what are the best selling rackets? But my question is, are the best sellers actually good? So unfortunately, a couple weeks ago, I injured my ankle a little bit. I was sliding for the ball and I guess my shoes were a little too worn, so my foot twisted in the upper. So here we are a couple weeks later needing some time off. That'll teach me to stop sliding all the time. Actually, no it won't. Sliding is just way too fun. So we've got a bit of a different video today. We're not going to be comparing any two rackets or reviewing any one specific product. Instead, I decided to round up all of the best selling rackets for the first half of the year and talk a little bit about them and how good they actually are. Now I'm not talking about the whole racket line here, I'm talking about one individual racket. So for example, if it were the CX200 Tour 1820, I'd be talking about that one racket and not the whole CX line. Now obviously I wasn't able to take them out for a play test this week, but I've extensively played with all these frames, some for the last six months and some for even longer than that. Remember that any of the rackets I cover here you can check out on our website racketsandrunners.ca and please remember to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and keep letting me know in the comments what product you'd like me to cover next. Your support has been awesome recently. I keep track of all the suggestions you guys make in that comment section, and I promise I'll be back on court as soon as possible. Back to the rackets. Going through our analytics to figure out the top five, there were a few notable themes going on. One of the most obvious ones was that each of these rackets you can pretty much pick up and it'll instantly feel good in anybody's hands. The rackets don't need customization, they don't need a specific string setup, and this is essential to easily sell a racket because it means that anyone who demos the frame doesn't need any period of adaptation and can quickly fall in love with it. These are also generally not very difficult rackets to use. None of them weigh more than 305 grams, which means they're easy to swing, and most have a 100 square inch head size. Don't get me wrong, smaller head size, heavier rackets have a fervent following amongst advanced players, but for the general population, they're a little bit more difficult to use so they won't be as instantly easy to sell. All these rackets also perform very well in most metrics. Some rackets will sacrifice a lot of one thing to be better at another. Take the Pure Drive 107 for example. Super easy to use and very powerful, but not very stable and controlled. I also just wanted to put this out there before we go on. It might go without saying, but just because your racket isn't on this list doesn't mean it's not an excellent racket. There are some fantastic playing rackets out there that might not sell as well as these, but are still incredible performers. Coming in at number five, you've got the Head Radical MP 2023. Now, to be honest, I was shocked it was this high up, and honestly, this racket represents an insane redemption story for the Radical line because about five years ago, it was completely in the dumps and barely selling at all. It used to be a hugely popular line, but then about 10 years ago, Head drastically changed up the shape here and kind of plunged the Radical line into a much darker era. So yes, seeing it this high was a bit surprising, but slowly Head has been making the Radical line quite a bit better, starting with the Graphene 360 and then made a fantastic racket with the Graphene 360 Plus. They built on that racket by adding Auxetic in 2023, and honestly, I can confidently say the Radical line is back. It's a racket that is really unique in its playability because it has all those positive aspects in terms of feel, control, and stability that you would expect from a 98, but packages them into a fairly user-friendly and forgiving end product. It's one of the easiest mid-plus frames to use because it has a sturdier undulating beam here and more powerful design, and it's one of the most spin-friendly 98s out there. There's basically no other racket that typifies the jack-of-all-trades label as well as the Radical does, and that's what makes it so special. But I did just want to emphasize that the Radical line's rebirth owes so much to this Auxetic technology. The feel really is leaps and bounds better than what it has been in recent past, and it's part of the reason why people can just grab this racket and instantly like it so much. Chapeau to you, Head. You stuck with the Radical, and I have to say, I am really happy to see such a legendary racket finally doing well again. Coming in at number four, you've got the Yonex E-Zone 100 V7. Now, I've been a massive fan of the E-Zone 98 for a number of years now, and I have to say, at first, I was a little bit surprised that the 100 was more popular, but it does make sense. It still has a lot of what makes the 98 so special, just in a slightly more forgiving and easy to use package. Yonex is one of those brands that has never shied away from innovation and the E-Zone has to be their most successful foray into the unknown. XI, AI, DR, the one we never talk about because it almost killed the line. The V6 and the V7, they've all been massively popular in their own right. Wait, that's only six rackets, so I'm missing one. Somebody let me know in the comments. But anyway, developing the E-Zone really was a daring move for Yonix. The combination of a thicker, more forgiving, and powerful hoop with such a thin throat 
makes for such a uniquely feeling racket. The amount of pocketing and feel, considering the amount of power and spin, really is incredible. And because it's such a unique response, the E-Zone line has developed probably the most loyal fan base in the world. You really can't get this playability out of any other racket, so players come back to it generation after generation, and the V7 really is one of the best. It's half a millimeter thicker this time around, which does just make it a little bit easier to use, but generally it has very good feel, excellent spin potential, a lot of power, and does just represent that easy one name that E-Zone is supposed to stand for. Now you're going to see with the next three that cornering the market into a sort of, if you want this playability, you gotta go for this racket, is crucial to creating a bestseller, and the E-Zone 100 definitely has that. Coming in at number three, we've got the Wilson Blade 98 V8 16 by 19. Remember what I said about being forgiving, easy to use, and not an exclusively advanced player's racket? Well, that's not true about the Blade, but let me explain why it's so popular. The Blade line basically has a stranglehold on the advanced player's racket sales, and while there are a lot more recreational players who like the more forgiving rackets on this list, there are still a lot of advanced players. Yes, I know there are a lot of other fantastic players' frames out there, believe me, I know, but the Blade is the one that so many juniors, pros, and other advanced players kind of default to because you know what you're going to get with the Blade and what you're going to get is very good. The V8 represents years of development and refinement on a line that was pretty much popular for each of its generations and this one really is perfect for where the game is at right now. It's one of the softest blades ever so it has a fantastic feel and control profile but it's also one of the most spin friendly blades I've ever tried. Wilson lowered the swing weight on the V8 1619 while keeping most of that great stability so you can whip the racket a little bit more quickly through contact which just means you can put a little bit more spin on the ball. The 1820 is also very popular and a fantastic racket at that, but nowhere near as popular as the 1619. Like I said, this really is the mainstream advanced player's racket, and 1619s are just more popular than 1820s. I have so many good things to say about the Blade. It's also a great platform racket, but basically Wilson developed a winner back in 2008, and they're still reaping the benefits to this day because they've maintained such a consistent and fantastic final product through each of the generations. Okay, so there's one brand that has been pretty obviously absent from this list, but I can confirm there are no surprising emissions. And coming in at number two, you've got the Babolat Pure Arrow 2023. Some of you might be surprised it's not number one. And to be honest, I kind of was as well. But I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that Nadal isn't quite playing at the level he once was. And so the frame isn't in the spotlight quite as much. Babolat has also diluted the popularity of one individual arrow by adding the Rafa. So that has something to do with it as well. But it's still an insanely popular racket and with good reason. This is, in my opinion, the best arrow of all time. I know that's a big statement, but it's also probably the front runner in my quest for a new racket of choice. I struggled a little bit with the last two arrows because I thought Babolat went a little bit too extreme with the spin and power on those. Obviously, spin potential is what made this line in the first place but I did just think that the massive spin grommets and super open string pattern just made for a slightly too inconsistent response for anything that wasn't an almost artificially spinny shot. They toned it back big time with this version of the arrow by closing up the string bed density here and putting a much more standard grommet set on the racket, and the final product really is just phenomenal. It has a control profile that it hasn't had for years, and the feel difference coming from the 2019 and even the original Aero Pro drives is just fantastic. The only drawback is that, yes, it's noticeably less spin friendly than the last two arrows, but it's still a spin monster, and because it's so much more solid than those rackets, it's no surprise that it's still doing so well. Now, I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anyone. You probably guessed it by now, but coming in at number one, you've got the Babolat Pure Drive 2021. What's crazy is that the Pure Drive came out two years ago, and it's still the number one selling racket by a huge margin. At the time of recording, this is the only racket that doesn't have a top 10 endorsement on either the men's or women's pro tour, and honestly, it doesn't need it. Everybody just loves the Pure Drive. It's crazy. People just go to it on the wall because it looks so good. Then when we send it out to demo with any other frame, it's almost a guarantee that that player comes back and says they want to buy it. Every theme that I mentioned earlier pretty much applies to the Pure Drive. Brands have tried to copy it for years, but Babolat really does have a chokehold on this design's user friendliness, power, spin, decent control, and especially that ability to go into any player's hands and have them like it right away. Pretty much anyone can use the Pure Drive, even the most advanced of players, as long as they don't prioritize the best control out of their racket, but that's just because it's still so stable and so consistent, especially for this style of racket. It kind of is a magical racket, I'm not gonna lie. It can do it all, and I don't see how it's going to be dethroned now or anytime in the future. I do have to say that Babolat knocked it out of the park with this generation. Pure Drives haven't always been known for their great feel, 
but Smack Tech did help a lot with that, and it also made the racket a lot more comfortable than it has been in the past. Honestly, I gotta say, I'm kind of surprised that a French company has been so consistent in marketing, development, and its ability to make a racket that's so popular amongst the masses. Before anyone says anything, this is my passport, I'm French, so I'm allowed to say that, and I'm also exhibit A for knowing that we can be a little bit stubborn sometimes for putting the blame on a product's lack of success on anyone but ourselves. Take my Ultra Shot review, for example. It didn't do very well, but it certainly isn't my fault that I decided to review a product that's two years old and getting replaced very soon. So yes, kudos to Babolat for staying at the top for so long and producing two incredible and crazy popular rackets that always seem to get better with each generation and push the needle for the modern game. I have to say, overall, the industry is in a very good place right now. The best selling rackets are objectively very good frames and that wasn't always the case and that just means that brands are getting it more right than they are wrong at the moment. There are obviously some other fantastic frames that might not be as popular for one reason or the other, <coughs> head gravity pro, but basically we're just spoiled for choice at the moment. I always seem to find a way to fit you in there, don't I? But anyways, that's it from us today. Hopefully next week I can be back on court. I've got some really fun content ideas coming up, but thank you for watching. Remember that any of the rackets I mentioned here today, you can come demo in store or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca.